Arsenal won, Fulham won, Fulham won, Arsenal won. Let me be honest, I've got a lot to get off my chest. The first thing I'll say, that first half was garbage. The tactics were garbage. The players' individual performances were garbage. Everything was garbage. And, you know, I don't know where to start, man. I really I really don't know where to start. At this point, I'm kind of exhausted with it, people. You know, you want to keep your head in a great space. The one saving grace is obviously, you know, you've, well, we saw Spurs lose. That's always great. United loss, et cetera, et cetera. But this is what I mean. If we want to do this, if we just want to be the bridesmaids and be part of the top four and chasing the pack, we've got enough to do that. The, results like today, and there's so much to unpack. For me, results like today or performances like today or reliant on certain players indirectly is a consequence of the summer market. What we did or did not do, we're at where we're at. We need something in January. We need to look towards look next summer. Right now, that is irrelevant. There's so much to unpack. The players, Mikel Arteta, everybody. First things first. You know, I love to be a corner boy. We scored from a set piece, but we're not creating nothing in the first half. And I think people need to get off Declan Rice's back because when you break down all the individual performances and, and square pegs in round holes who's setting them out it's Mikel Arteta you've got Kai Havertz whether you believe in him or not and big him up for his involvement in Saliba's obviously equaliser at that point you've got a striker that is good but not good enough and he's service reliant not a damn chance is created you've got Declan Rice who is a top class number six a household name you're playing him as an eight and at one point in that first half he's looking the most dangerous last time I checked ain't no one trying to see Declan Rice in the final third as much as I love him that's not his bread and butter Jorginho quality in the second half first half unrecognizable timber unrecognizable kivio and timber completely at sixes and sevens you know that yes there's injuries injuries happen with everyone we're being tested but there's no excuses the basics you know for what it's worth i feel in that first half literally bearing in mind fulham scored in the 11th minute the first 10 i think it was good they were you know we, they, they were in their own half, we're knocking the ball around, but this is why you can't confuse having the ball, a team being camped in their own half, possession with actually creating chance, with actually creating chances or, or, or anything of any real note, people. Like I said, the first 10 minutes were cool. Fulham, I have to give them credit. You know, they played out from the back well. They defended generally well. I, I, I actually believe in the first half. They grew in a bit of confidence. Jimenez scored, but forget his goal. I think for young aspiring footballers out there, that's how you play as a striker. When, you know, every time Leno would just lump it long, and I'm not trying to discredit Fulham, they're definitely not a long ball side. Anytime they lump it long, we're in, we's in troubles. Yes, Jimenez is a, is a handful and we struggled in that regard. But I saw us at six and sevens. I saw a disjointed back four. I saw a lack of communication. A lot of my players were unrecognisable. Timber brought nothing to the table in the first half. Trossard was at sixes and sevens. Kivy all over the shop. You know, you can gas up the Man United result. It was always going to be a completely different game here. Saliba had to regulate and do what he can. Obviously, Thomas Partey, I know people don't want to see the man play right back. I hear it. Neither do I. But I think, you know, no, it, it isn't that it, today that was not the issue. I think Partey did something. The issue now becomes you take Partey, our best performing central midfielder, out of midfield, whether he's inverting or not. You've got Declan Rice just running forward, rightly or wrongly. That's the manager's tactics. Saka and Odegaard not really having, not really doing much. They're, they're purring, they're kind of half in it. But we know if you're not, you know, if our right hand side's not on it, we're at sixes and sevens. Between Trossard and Martinelli, neither player is good enough to, cons to consistently start. We do need an upgrade on Kai Havertz, but I feel a bit sorry for him in that regard. Not that he, you know, he frustrates me on the floor and whatnot, but you've got tools and we're not utilizing them. The first half was terrible in that regard. And we're quite fortunate that it will be sometimes in the final third passing was off. Traore is rubbish in my opinion. Um, you know, thank the Lord Smith Rowe with that run. And if there's one Fulham player we should know about, is that for, that forward run that that Smith Rowe makes. If that touch was better, he scores against us. We're in problems, really. The only saving grace is the second half. As I said, in the first half, it was incredibly uh, unrecognisable for me. Second half, we've come out, we've done a little bit better. We've obviously scored from a set-piece corner. Boys in the building. We've obviously scored a second goal. We're in ecstasy. You know, I'm getting clipped up on social media. VAR with the best bit of defending in that second half. But even in the first half, you know, tr yes, Tom um, Thomas Party should have scored a header. Declan Rice thinks he's Frank Lampard and hit a shoddy effort with his left peg. I think Saliba went close from a header in the first half. We're not creating enough. I think people do too much in terms of the corners and that, but we're lacking cutting edge. We're lacking individual quality. We're lacking a lot. Yes, there's injuries and that would hurt any team, but injuries happen. We've been seeing this as a, from an Arsenal perspective. So I think you sign up for certain things when you do or don't do stuff in the market. And obviously, Mikel Arteta, I, listen, I think you're a good manager. I think you're a genius. 
could never understand football to your capacity. But by that same token, football is a simple game. And at times we're playing into your opponent's hand and we're overcomplicating things. Yes, considering the run we've been on, the fact that Liverpool weren't playing today, well, this weekend, the fact that City obviously dropped points. Yes, you know, you wanted to win today and keep our momentum and do what we're doing. Fulham are a great team. They're in good form. And I think on reflection, a draw was a fair result, really and truly. There was two shots on target between both sides in that first half. When Fulham got one, they obviously made it count. For us, we didn't bring much to the table and do much. So we can't really be surprised. I think it's a culmination of, you know, when you're talking about winning a league, in terms of the rebuild and fighting for a trophy and, you know, winning and stuff, we're, we're around it. But getting over the line, we ain't got enough. There's too many players that are hot and cold. There's too many players you can't bet on for 29 to 30 to 30 of the 38 game calendars. If our right hand side's not bringing nothing to the table, we're already in issues. And ultimately, football's decided in both boxes. We let ourselves down in the build up play for Fulham's goal. We obviously scored a goal, but we didn't put at no point did I go, what a save, Leno. You know, us of all, take nothing away from Leno. Us are all, of all fans, we know Leno has a problem catching balls. He made it happen today, really and truly. And, and credit to Fulham. I think, you know, first half, they defended well, low blocks. They grew in a bit of confidence and started attacking. They defended amicably. I don't really rate Diop and Bassi. I thought that's where we could ask questions. We didn't really do that. So we can't really be complaining. But this is why I always say, before I look at Liverpool, who are doing tremendous, Chelsea, who are getting points on the board, City, who, regardless of what's going on there, nobody's ran away with the league title. No one's really got any distance like that. Liverpool are laughing because... They've played one, they, they ain't played this weekend and out of Liverpool, give or take with Chelsea, but out of out of Liverpool, City and Arsenal, Liverpool ain't kicked a ball and they, 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 they're the happiest men and they have had the best performance. We shoot ourselves in the foot. Before I look at anybody else, this is why I always say we can be our best friends or worst enemies. Because I do think when you have to put the players out there and you don't really have much to rely on, this is what you sign up for. Mikel Arteta, again, indirectly, a lot of it is on, is on you. We keep shooting ourselves in the foot. You can turn into mathematicians as much as you want. Say Liverpool will drop points and this will happen. We will drop points. Of course, I'm being harsh, but we're chasing a deficit. And, you know, in certain games, I'm more harsher than others. But holding on to the lead against Brighton, City, Liverpool, Chelsea now didn't get over the line. Did not turn up against Newcastle. Did not turn up against Bournemouth. Shot yourselves in the foot against Fulham now. We probably, you know, four points from six. It's not the worst, but it's not six out of six. It's not chasing the deficit. It's not doing everything you can before Liverpool kick a ball. All we can do is keep fighting. But this is why for me, I don't believe. I've, I've said in the summer, I said the champs is impossible. The Prem is improbable. Mathematically, we have to keep going. We have to dust ourselves off. But... This is what I mean. We have the incredible ability to shoot ourselves in the foot and make diff the difficult difficult tasks even harder for no absolute reason, people. And this is, you know, Mikel Arteta has to take responsibility. I always said if this was a mixtape or an album, if this season was a mixtape or an album, it'd be called Fine Margins. We missed out on a Premier League. And I know you can't win them all, but we missed out on a Premier League trophy by a two points. Two points. And how many games were there? West Ham, where we created a million chances, couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. You know you need more clinical men. Saka's the only one you can bet on. And today, he weren't involved like that. It's peak. Chelsea at, at, at away, sorry. Um, West Ham at home. Spurs at home. Um, the two against Aston Villa. The two against Fulham, ironically. And there's probably been some others. Now, I can't. I know you can't win them all. Of course, I wish Arsenal could win 38 out of 38 games. But... When you're looking for a league title, it's these five margins. And again, you bet on what you, this is what happens. Yes, injuries happen to everyone, but we know Tommy Asu can't stay fit. We know Zinni gets get you know make gets injuries. We know, and I'm and I know it's easier said than done. We know if Gabriel Saliba gets injured, there's a massive drop off. We know Timber is much better on the right hand side than on on the left, and you only want to see Timber left back in big games where there's a bit more defending. We know Declan Rice, no matter what. Yeah, there's certain things I, I reckon Arteta wants from an eight. That's not an eight. You know you take Partey and make him a right back. He's still going to invert your in issues. Jorginho, normally, you know, off the ball, you're never quite confident. On the ball, there's a lot. First half, like a number of players, they were unrecognisable. Jorginho did his thing. We know we lack individual brilliance. I think Trossard huffed and puffed ultimately between Trossard, between, between Trossard, Martinelli, Gabriel Jesus, the loan signing of Raheem Sterling. How many do you believe in? How many attackers do you believe in? Saka wholeheartedly. Weren't good enough today, but wholeheartedly. Odegaard wholeheartedly. Young Ethan, great, great player. Let him go out there and just learn and, and, and do his thing. Trossard, good for the squad. Martinelli, squad player. But getting get Gabriel Jesus is mad for you. We signed up for this. 
Football's decided in both boxes. Didn't defend enough. Haven't been defending well enough all season. We dropped off a cliff in that regard. Yeah, we score from corners and set pieces and we got 90-odd goals. But when you break down the goals, excluding set pieces and looking individually, yes, many people have the capacity to score. Kai did it for half a year. Trossard, in his couple of seasons here, there's been seasons he's got mad assists and mad goals. You don't know in August if he's going to do it. Saka's the only one. So when you're not clinical in the final third, when you're not defending amicably, when you're kind of half in the game in midfield and you're making the midfield a bit disjointed, you can't, you sign up for this. Now the players know it. It's not good enough to be good for 20 minutes, for 45 minutes, for, you know, for 10 minutes. You need to be better than that. Now, we knew Fulham, one of the most informed sides. No one wants to play Fulham right now. So, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. It is what it is. All we can do is, you know, definitely learn what we got bad, what we did bad today and get back on the horse, man. But this is why, for me, I can't sit here with chess and say we're going to win Prems and that. Right now, we're a team that can half and half be part of the chasing pack, maybe do a little cup thing. Beyond that, getting over the line, it's issues, man. This, this season was tight with fine margins. For me, we need signings in January. Is it going to happen? No, to give us some boost. Obviously, the first half was garbage. I don't really want to waffle about players that weren't involved, but, you know, I, I, even though Zinchenko, there's issues. I would have actually, in the first half, thought we needed Zinchenko invert in the midfield. Would have loved Tommy Asu available. Would have loved Benjamin White and all the other players. But either way, there's issues. And, you know, if we're crying about all of these individual players, make no mistake, the players have to take responsibility, people. But this is our Arteta's team. And I'm not saying Arteta out in, check it out, all about. But this is the issues now. I like Arteta. I do think you're a genius. I do think you're going to be a good manager. One love for the rebuild. But where it's about getting over the line now, bearing in mind what you lot said on the last day of the season, did we address all areas? We did bring in some good signings in the summer. We let people go. It's like we went forward one step. It's like we're here. We've gone forward one step and then gone backwards. So we're in the same space. This is why I say as a club, I, I think Arteta would like to win a Premier League trophy. You're just going to buy it a mad way. I think the players will, but collectively as a club, because we talk about collaboration, I think you would like to win a Prem. I think you would like to win a Champs. I don't think you're dying to win it, but the past brings regrets. The future brings uncertainty. Learn what you need to learn from this. Now it's on to Monaco and you need to be Everton at home with Sean Dyche's men. That's not going to be easy. Obviously, Chelsea have won today. City have obviously dropped points. We have dropped points. Liverpool have a game in hand. Nobody knows, innit? But just get back on the horse, man. That's all I've got to say.